Mo Long here, and I'm going to take a look at how to install RetroPi on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. RetroPi on the Raspberry Pi was one of the first Raspberry Pi projects that I ever put together back when I first got Raspberry Pi 2. And since then, I've upgraded boards as well as upgraded my setup quite a bit. First thing that we're going to need to do is go ahead and download that Raspberry Pi image. In this case, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi 2 and Raspberry Pi 3 image. So go ahead and download that. And that should save to your downloads folder. So we're going to give that a moment to download. It is an image.gz file. So depending on how you're actually mounting this on a micro SD card, you might need to go ahead and decompress that with some sort of software such as 7-Zip. And that's going to leave you with an image file. When you're ready to burn that to a micro SD card, go ahead and run some sort of software such as Etcher. First, you're going to need to select your image file, select your boot medium. Mine's already selected as a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. And when you're ready to mount it, let's go ahead and hit flash. Here we are in RetroPie running on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and the first thing that we're going to need to do is configure our controller. I'm using an Xbox 360 wireless controller, but you should be able to use a lot of other different wired and wireless gamepads. And there you go. Our controller is configured and ready to go. Although for certain emulators, you may need to go ahead and configure your controller specifically for those. So as you can see, there aren't really a lot of emulators loaded up. You're only going to see emulators for games where you have ROMs in there. So right now, all we have is Amiga. And here we have the RetroPy menu. One of the first things that you're gonna wanna do after getting into RetroPy is get connected to the internet. If you're using ethernet, you can just plug in your ethernet cable, but for Wi-Fi, you're gonna have to go ahead and get connected 
with the Raspberry Pi. So go ahead under that Retro Pi menu and go down to Wi-Fi. Now, go ahead and select Connect to Wi-Fi Network. Scroll down and find the Wi-Fi network that you want to connect to. And now you're just going to need to enter your password. Once you've done that, select OK. And you should be connected. And as you can see here, I am now connected to my Wi-Fi network. So we can go ahead and exit. After getting connected to the internet, I recommend going ahead and running an update. So we're going to go into RetroPie Setup. Let's go ahead and run an update.
An update can take a little bit of time, but once that finishes, you'll see a message that says installed packages have been updated. Next, I always think it's a good idea to do a basic installation. Again, this might take some time. So you might want to go get a little bit of coffee, take a walk, just keep yourself occupied for a little bit. After running a basic install, let's go ahead and go down to manage packages. I generally prefer updating packages by binary, and there are a couple reasons for that. Source will be the most up-to-date packages, but that takes a really long time, and moreover, there might be bugs. So I typically go with a binary installation. Go ahead and let this complete. Once again, this does take a while, so you might want to take a break and go do something else while you're waiting for. All right, and when that finishes, you'll be back at this menu. I always think it's a good idea to update main packages as well. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and install and update these from binary rather than source. Give this a little bit of time. And once it completes, we'll be Now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and exit out and restart RetroPie. There are a couple different ways that you can load ROMs onto RetroPie. And I think by far the easiest is taking a flash drive and you're gonna create a new folder at the root of that flash drive. RetroPie-mount. Now what you're gonna do is go ahead and remove that flash drive. Pop it into your Raspberry Pi. Give it a couple moments to populate that flash drive with a bunch of folders within the RetroPie mount folder. Put it back on your computer and drag and drop your ROMs onto that disk. You do have another option though, which is to log in over your network. And this is going to vary a lot depending on what operating system you're using. 
And since I'm using a Windows PC, I just went down here to the Network tab. And as you can see, I can view my RetroPie operating system from here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And click ROMs. And then there you go. All my ROMs folders are right here. And I can go ahead and drag and drop ROMs into the corresponding folders on my RetroPie installation. If you'd rather use a flash drive though, like I mentioned, you just plug in that RetroPie mount folder. If you're going with the flash drive method, once you create that RetroPie mount folder at the root of your flash drive, plug it into the Pi and wait a couple minutes. Once you plug it back into your computer, you're going to find a bunch of different folders under that main RetroPie mount folder, including a ROMs folder. And there you're going to see a ton of different folders where you can drop the ROMs that correspond to those systems. I've gone ahead and loaded up my external drive with a bunch of ROMs. And one of the reasons I like using an external storage device for ROMs is I can keep all my ROMs, my BIOS, even all my metadata for scraped ROMs, such as games lists and downloaded images on that drive. And then if anything happens, like my micro SD card gets corrupted, which I've actually never had happen before, knock on wood. It's pretty easy to just go ahead and reinstall RetroPie on a micro SD card and I have my setup ready to go. So as you can see now we have a ton of different systems and they're all appearing because I have ROMs in those folders. So you can go ahead and scroll through and check them out this way. And we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of those game lists. As you can see, I do have box art here. I'm pretty anal about making sure that I scrape my ROMs and have box art. If you do need to scrape your ROMs, you have a couple different options for how to do that. So you're gonna to wanna to pull up that start menu and hit scraper and you can choose either the games DB or screen scraper. And you can choose whether you want to scrape ratings. And you can pick a few different options, such as only scraping for games that are missing images. You can select user decides on conflict. So basically this is gonna ask you before it saves any box art. And you can also go ahead and toggle on the systems that you wanna scrape for. Generally, what I typically do here is scrape by one system at a time. So that way I can make sure that 
all box art was downloaded correctly for games within that system, but you can also just go ahead and select multiple systems if you'd like. And depending on how many games you're scraping at once, this might take a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and take a look at some Super Nintendo performance and a couple other games running on the Raspberry Pi 3B+.
it should come as no surprise that Super Nintendo games run extremely well on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. They're not very challenging, and this hardware is totally able to keep up with their demands. N64 games are pretty hit or miss. We did have a few frame rate dips. At times it was playable, but N64 games like Goldeneye really just aren't going to run super well on the Pi 3B+. I also want to take a look at some PlayStation 1 performance, and again, most PlayStation 1 games should run really well on the Pi 3B+.
Despite being a much newer system, PS1 games still run really well on the Pi 3. While RetroPie is great for gaming, there's another component that I do want to take a look at, and that's its Kodi Media Center. Kodi originally started out as XBMC or Xbox Media Center and then blossomed into what we now know as Kodi, and it's a really robust free open source media center option that is phenomenal for both local file and networked file playback as well as streaming from various add-ons. I really like it because it never fails to play any file whether it's a video file or music file that I throw at it and it also has a lot of add-ons that you can download granted your add-on experience will vary quite a bit just because no add-ons are actually offered by Kodi itself they're all third party I typically use used the MB add-on Funimation there are a lot of different options but let's go ahead and take a look at Kodi running on RetroPie. Now here we are in Kodi for RetroPie and it's running at present Kodi Lia 18.2 so it's a pretty new release of Kodi. I don't have any local files loaded up but Pretty much any of those should play completely fine on the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and take a look at some streaming from add-ons. The Plex for Kodi add-on is one of the better add-ons that you can use because it's officially made by Plex and it just runs really well. I'm actually pretty impressed with just how quickly box art loads and how snappy the user interface is here and in general just how easy browsing is and how quick it feels especially on the Raspberry Pi 3 View Plus that I'm using here. Let's go ahead and do a test of some video streaming and see how that runs. And we'll just back out of there. As expected, streaming was pretty smooth. And if I recall correctly, I think that was just a 720p file. So that's not going to be really taxing for this hardware. 
But the thing you got to remember, especially if you're streaming from a Plex or from a server, is a lot of your experience will be dictated by how strong your server is. So since I have a pretty good server, I wasn't terribly worried about how that would stream. One thing I really like about RetroPy is the fact that Cody is included because I just feel like it makes it a bit more of a multi-purpose operating system. Something like Laka works incredibly well and I like the way that controllers are supported just out of the box on Laka, but the thing about it is it's purely for retro gaming. There are no home theater PC capabilities like it doesn't have Kodi or any sort of built-in media player functionality and I really like that RetroPie includes that. The thing is it's not like I don't have any other streaming devices in fact I have probably far too many. I have an Nvidia Shield TV, I have two Android set-top boxes that just run a tablet optimized version of Android, I've got a Roku 2XS, I have a Roku stick, I have a bunch of DIY streaming devices that I've made, but I do like the ability just to throw my Raspberry Pi running RetroPi in my bag or something, go over to a friend's house, take it on a road trip, and be able to play some games, and then switch into Kodi for some streaming or playing files off of a hard drive or flash drive. Well, there's RetroPie running on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. And I gotta say, it's not the only retro gaming operating system I've tried for the Raspberry Pi or any other single board computer, but it is the one that I typically use the most. I've also really enjoyed Laka. Recall Box and Batocera. But RetroPie, with its ease of use, the incredibly large community, all the different extras for it, like themes and custom shaders, and just generally its balance of user friendliness as well as additional features for power users. I think is what keeps me coming back to it. And like I mentioned, I really appreciate the way that it includes Kodi for home theater, PC use, and even a number of different extras like Steam Link. So I can actually stream games from my desktop to the Raspberry Pi and use it for in-home streaming. It's just a really functional and versatile operating system. And I absolutely think that you can make a case that it's the best retro gaming operating system for the Raspberry Pi. So thanks for watching and keep gaming.